Hey, are you trying to have your beat sound professional for when you post it on YouTube, Apple Music, and Spotify, and all other streaming platforms that is not too low in volume or highly compressed because you pushed it so hard on a limiter? Stay in tune, and I'm going to lead you in the right direction on how to master a track. What's up? It's your boy Jay Freshman. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe for more in-depth tutorials and producer guidance in the right context for you. So without further ado, let's get started. Couple things before we get into mastering. This is not going to be the same mastering that you see sound engineers do. People that actually go to school for this and built that skill set and really train their ears to get to that point to hear certain things that the average listener or the average producer won't hear. You got to understand this is a skill set in itself, just like being a drummer or a pianist. So just giving respect when it's due and not downplaying anyone's credit. Second, make sure you pick the right path for you. Like some of you guys are going to go off to be sound engineers and some of you guys are just going to be producers that just, you know, do the basics of mastering. And both lanes are fine. It's just about which one you actually have a passion for. Like don't just try to dive into learning everything about mastering because you're trying to outbeat other producers. Yes, you would come up with a better sound, but that would kind of slow your process down, especially if you really don't have a drive and you're forcing yourself to learn this kind of stuff. And this stuff can get really complex when you really need to be more focused on just like, you know, getting your mix done and just doing a nice mastering so you could upload it to your site. But if you really enjoy the process of recording artists and training your ears and just learning a lot about sounds then make sure you become a sound engineer so three have quality sounds and this year 2020 no more trying to figure out what's the best free vst invest get these plugins man that you know are the top and popular ones right now not to sound like everybody else it just goes back to you working more efficiently like if you're trying to work with stock plugins and you're trying to make the best out of it and you're really trying your hardest, you're going to waste a lot of time unless you really love sound and you're going to learn sound designs and then you're going to really make the best out of stock plugins because you have a lot of knowledge in sound design. You know, just want to tell you guys this before we get started because you got to pick your lane or you're going to waste a lot of time and you're not going to work as efficient as you can. But now we could get started and... The fourth one, make sure you're using proper headphones, studio headphones, and studio monitors. Don't be trying to mix on anything else. Don't be trying to master on anything else because you have to hear certain things. And it has to be a flat frequency response. That's why an app that I like to recommend is Sonarworks. My, my trial is over. I got to actually buy the whole thing. But it will flatten out the frequency so you can actually translate your mix a lot better on other devices. But let's get started. All right, so I'm going to play the track for you. So we're just going to pretty much be listening to see if there's any high frequencies that stand out to us or if the bass is just overbearing, like it just taking over other melodies or if the melodies are too low. Just kind of analyzing your track. Make sure you close your eyes, turn it down. Don't have it too loud because if you have it loud, you're going to have the wrong perception of your actual song, you know. So And you don't have to close your eyes. It's just... It's just a good way to kind of visualize it in your head. You'll be more focused in a sense, at least for me. All right. So let's say that, you know, most of you guys are probably beginners and or if you're advanced, let's say that your ears is just not really you haven't really focused on training your ears and understand a lot of people is going to tell you, oh, you get better over time if you just keep making a lot more beats. No, the real way you get better at hearing stuff is to train your ears. Make sure you join a program. Sound Gym is a good one. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but it will point you in the right direction so you can start hearing certain frequencies. But if 
you're in an untreated room, make sure you're using analyzers, spe spectrum analyzers. Like this one is called Span, and I put the link in the description. You want to start doing things in the right context for you rather than listening to other producers that are telling you to mix and master by your ears rather than um by your eyes, which is not necessarily true all the time because if you're in an untreated room and you really don't know how sound works because sound bounces off the walls way before it gets to your ears. So then by the time it gets to your ears, you're just going to have the whole wrong perception of your mix. And this is why it's not translating right, especially if you don't understand what frequencies are being boosted or cut in your studio monitors or your headphones because it's not necessarily that all of these headphones and studio monitors have a flat response is very close, but it's just not. If you want me to go more over Sonaworks, just drop that in the comments below and I'll do another video about that. But back to what we're doing. So I'm gonna play it back. So if you look right here from like 350 to 500 range, that's a boxy range or a muddy range. So when you hear producers using these terms boxy and muddy, it just means unpleasant frequencies. And it's really what makes the mix not sound clear. So you really want to get rid of those frequencies. Not completely though. But you can see that this is like really standing out a lot. So we're going to have to bring up an EQ and just kind of cut a little of it. So I, I'm going to just put it side to side. And anytime you're um, doing any effects, make sure you A, B it. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Like before and after. So you want to exaggerate so you can find that frequency. So you can... You can already tell just having it like that. You could really find that it's just really boxy, muddy, and we just going to take it out. So as you can see, it's still kind of sticking up right here. So that's about like close to 500. I'm not close to 500. So let me just get closer. All right. So now that I found that frequency, now I could come back up with it but be actually before you come back up with it just to test your ears you want to do an a b test of how it sounds when it's cut out to see what you're really looking for so i'm gonna turn it off and turn it on so you can hear it this is with it off So you should be able to hear that it's like a resonant sound. Try to listen out for it in the mid range. Listen to that lead where it goes like, dun, 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 dun. listen to that and you're going to really find it. That lead right there is making it like very boxy so so now that we know it sounds good when it's not like that now we can bring some of it back and as you can see i was like just kind of playing with it you want to kind of play with it so you could like find a pocket for it this is just a good technique for beginner producers or even advanced producers, you know, finding the right pocket for it. And just keep in mind, you don't want to do too much. Like, as you can look in the left-hand corner, I'm doing, like, at least 2.3 dB deduction. Not really trying to go to, like, 5 and 6 dramatics because then you're just putting holes in your mix or your master. But what some producers do, if they decide to go very low, then they bring another band and put it on top. And, you know, it kind of works as like a gain knob on a compressor where you compress it and you, you like decrease the dynamic and you bring up that whole new dynamic sound. 
that's pretty much what you're doing here if you go like that. That's why it's all about context so you can really understand what other producers are doing. So that's good. Now if we look at our highs, um, usually people will say to boost the highs to make it brighter, but that's not always the case. Make sure if, if your highs are like low, then you could probably boost it. But let's just look. It's pretty fair. Don't worry about what's happening over here. If anything, we could boost a little of the 4K range. You could hear like a clearer sound from that clarity in a sense. You know, every frequency has like its own kind of correlation to a pleasant sound or unpleasant sound. Like I said, three in the low mids, that's where you could find a lot of boxy stuff. In the highs, that's where you could find a lot of clarity and stuff. So you kind of just want to pay attention to that. Crazy with it. Hey, be it. All right. And if your bass is doing too much, just kind of round it off. this a b it so the bass is kind of more tame in my opinion like i said i'll probably bring it up just a little but just always keep a b in it that's how you're going to really find if you're um, really making the right adjustments to it. And make sure you're doing stuff at a low volume. Turn down your volume on your interface. Get out of the habit of doing things loud. It's not good for your ears and it's just not good for your perception of the mix. So now that we have those things taken care of, like I said, if you mix your beats the right way and you have quality sounds, you're not going to really have to do too much. So make sure that you're building great habits as a producer. Don't have all your sounds coming in the mixer very hot and it's already at zero and you haven't mastered it yet because you're not even giving yourself any kind of dynamic range. And this is why a lot of other producers would tell you that they have their mixes hit around 60 dB so they have room to play around with other effects or compressions if needed. If you have your stuff already at zero, not only is all your sounds being distorted, it's just so messy. I really don't understand why so many producers do that. And it's just not a great habit to build, especially, you know, it's all about gain staging in a mixing. Um, Make sure you watch my mixing video or a leveling video. I'll show you how to gain stage properly because it, everything matters in this order. Like even in the mixer rack, like the parametric is before Maximus and, you know, it all goes from top to bottom. So going into Maximus right now, make sure you have it on default. If you're in FL20, it should just default to default. <laughs> Detach it so you can see it. And now... What we're going to focus on in here is either compression or the stereo imaging and then the limiting. And the limiting is just, you know, making it louder. And then you're pretty much kind of done after that when you follow those steps. And then everything else could be like effects that you want to like spice up your whole master to make it sound even better. So what a lot of people do is solo their lows and then they put it in mono. And the reason why I said to invest into greater plugins, like even Isotope Imager, is just a better visual. It makes your life a lot easier as a beginner producer. If you have these tools as a beginner, man, you're just going to be set. And I actually had this set already, but I'm going to reset it. So let me show you what I mean. 
I'm a solo the lows. So as you can see, it's pretty much in mono for the most part. Like you could go out your way and you know make it more in mono so it's a straight line, but it's really not that necessary. A little bit of stereo won't hurt. A lot of people would tell you like, oh, you shouldn't have no stereo in your lows, but that's not necessarily true for other genres. So it really depends on your genre and your preference. So I'll just keep it low. And then you could boost the mids. I'm going to boost my mids because look at it. On solo. There's really not any kind of stereo image in, in this beat or any width in this beat. So I'm going to build some. Hold on, the Maximus is still on. Unsolo that. And then I'm gonna go to extremes. So that sounds good right here. The pianos hit you a lot more. And then the higher mids. Because you really want the high mids and the highs more in your face. But not too much because then you will lose that hit of the clap or, you know, your snare. So little adjustments go a far way. And then your highs. You could kind of boost your highs very high. So when I, like I said, play with it so you could find the pocket. So right there is good. And then if you want to do like an overall and build more width to it, you can use this knob at the bottom, turn it on. better to me and you know when you really have an understanding of mixing then you could translate it to other plugins like you could do the same thing I just did in the imager imager just give you that visual so you know you could actually just mix it with your eyes and like I said you want to mix with your eyes if you're in an untreated room you want to get that right perception so everything could translate well so I had my lows all the way in mono i have my mids like fairly like that we can turn off the imager so you can hear it the highs make sure you solo it and then boom and then also what i see a lot of other producers do is you know put the saturation and the thing about the saturation you could either put it on the whole thing or like you know the lows or the mids and the highs it's up to you and that's why if you go back to the parametric eq that's why you didn't see me do this whole thing where i put another bandwidth on top of it because i'm gonna use an exciter an exciter is just like adding more harmonics that's pretty much what saturation and distortion pretty much do. And that's why I'm saying if you have an overall understanding of mixing and the fundamentals, then you can easily find your workarounds. Meaning like if you don't have a certain third party plugin, you could kind of remake it with what you have. But like I said, you still want to invest into the third party plugins, even though they pretty much do the same thing. It's just a higher quality, a different texture, a different color, a different warmth. So... If you don't have like, you know, Kramer tape, you know, that's from Waves, you could easily use Fruity Fast Distortion to like give off the same effect. So that's what we're going to do. So the thing with the Fruity Fast Distortion, you make, make sure you turn down the threshold because if you don't, you're going to get this noise with your beat. 
please turn your headphones down. I'm warning you right now, and I'm gonna turn mine down as well. <laughs> so here we go. So obviously you wouldn't want your distortion that high because that would just obviously break up your whole beat and it would sound terrible. So you wanna bring down the threshold. Also, you wanna bring down the wet knob in the mixer and then you get this. So A, B it. So you hear it like that. Then you want to just wind it back down. And you can also do that with, you know, Fruity Wave Shaper. You could do that with the uh, Blood Overdrive. These are just distortion plugins, but saturation and distortion, they're kind of pretty much the same. Saturation is probably just a more better way of smoothing it out than, you know, distortion just actually being that hard, heavy, like hardcore. <laughs> Obviously, if I turn on hardcore, anybody that knows hardcore is just going to disrupt and kill your ears. But... The pro there's a proper way you could st even still use hardcore is just like just going to the wet knob and just bringing it down and just kind of blending it in. So I would use from a third party plugin. I personally would use an exciter. And this one I could bring up because this is like saturation. So I w that's why I was saying like saturation is more of a smooth you know, kind of distortion, and I could bring up individual bands. Like, if I want the mids to stand out more, let's see how that sounds. Take off the um, fruity distortion. And just kind of mess around with it, this A, B it. Make sure you unsolo it. mess around with that get the taste that you want for it so that's pretty much the same thing and you could do the same thing with maximus just bring down the threshold of how much saturation you want but for the most part with that you know with the saturation and distortion or the exciter you're just pretty much adding more harmonics you know filling in you know the dead space let me unsolo. No, that was Maximus. So, therefore, I don't have to go back and, you know, add another EQ on top of the um, cut. The saturation will, like, just take care of that. It will add harmonics back, pretty much. So, now that leaves us up to compression. And you could either compress the whole track or you could do a multi-band compression. I'm not going to go too much over it because, like I said, if you get the mix right from the beginning and you compress the sounds that need to be compressed, like your drums and the melodies that are just going up and down too crazy, you want to kind of tame those. If you take care of everything in the mix, you won't have to do too much with the actual master. So just like with the imager, if you take care of all the stereo imaging beforehand in the mix, you don't really have to do that in the master. Just to get a better understanding of what to do with the multi-band compression, I'm gonna show you right now. So it's already being compressed. So you kind of want to reset these um, knobs. And you can see what's being compressed because the um, attenuation right here. So kind of bring those down to start over. M is to mute. So now you have the, the highs only playing. So I don't really like to use anything that's not visual. Like I don't know what's being compressed. You only just know what's being taken out. So this one you're gonna really have to do by air. So make sure you have like great headphones. Bring up the attack knob for your highs. 
So I'm going to just give you like rough guides. Bring up the attack knob for your high so that it don't sound squish like this. You don't want your highs to sound squish. squish. And then your ratio, they already set it to a soft ratio, which is usually two to one. Bring up your gain knob to restore um, what you've taken out. And you just pretty much do that with the rest of the bands. I'm not going to go over that because that's just basic compression, just split between different bands. And I have a video on compression if you want to um, know more about it. So pretty much that's all you really need for your master. Now we're going to get to the point where we're going to put the limiter on it. Just put the limiter. I personally don't use Fruity Limiter, but it will do the job. So all you have to do here, and you can even, like, if you don't want to um, go too crazy and try to compress everything one by one, just do it in the limiter. Don't compress too much. Just go to the halfway mark of where your sounds are. So about right here. Do it like a two to one up the attack so don't compress it a lot shorten your release so they don't compress a lot <laughs> all right so now we're going to actually set our ceiling to negative 0.3 so that it doesn't clip and then we're just going to crank it Find the sweet spot and then pretty much you have your track master but like me personally um i like the l2 on the waves this limiter just sounds better in my opinion and i would just do the same thing everything could translate to another thing that's why it's just important to know the fundamentals of certain things and then i just crank it let me turn it on And this one actually shows the attenuation of what is um, going out. And you don't want to go all the way down to like six or nine. That means you're squashing your track. A good threshold is like three. And then boom, you have a master. All right, there you go, you guys. This has been the ultimate master guide. And I'll probably do more master videos because there's a lot to mastering. There's a lot of different ways you can approach it. But here is one way that will get you started. So like and subscribe if you like this video and share it to other producer friends that don't know how to master or just need a bit of a guidance. Thank you. Have a nice day.